Now 10 o'clock, I'm going to uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, those of you that have uh, cell phones, please put them on silence. Uh, can we all stand and do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we'll move on. We have the uh, minutes of the uh, October uh, 7th meeting. Um, are there any additions or questions to those minutes as, uh, as mailed out? Hold them. Second. Okay. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. We also have the minutes of the Orton Slough uh, District. Are there any corrections or of those minutes? Move up. Okay. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. We have the discussion on approval of the claims. Move it. Your second. Second. Uh, those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. I'll pass the, uh, oh, that's human resources. Human resources, we have the approval of the memorandum of personal transactions. I'll pass it around for uh, signatures. Go ahead. Second. Discussion. Those in favor indicate for saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. We have the uh, item of uh, approval of re reauthorization of the initiation of hiring process. Their motion. I would, uh, I did a little checking on this. Case loads run 25 to 50 around the state. The IAD waiver assessment has been contracted out by the state, uh, which reduces paperwork for the uh, targeted case managers. The IME or Medicaid put out a letter last week that said that they're considering including uh, the mentally challenged in the um, target of waiver, or the target of whatever that is that Richner has. Um, the integrated home health model and um, there seems to be a movement statewide to move the intellectually challenged into that integrated home health model. Um, one county is not hiring even if the positions are vacated because they don't <coughs> understand what's happening. Um, the fact that we're reimbursed by Medicaid is irrelevant. Money's got to come from somewhere. It's not free. So I think adding a case manager at this time would be inappropriate. Uh, consideration for additional people should be done during the budget time and not during uh, the regular year. 
It was not, we would not let anyone else do this unless it was an absolute emergency like the nurses. Pat, do you want to respond to that, please? Our case loads um, average about 30 because of the amount of paperwork. We have started with the first county that started the um, CIS evaluation. Um, we opened that, our office is up, we allow those folks to come up. Um, I don't see where it's a reduction in paperwork at all. Um, the case load and paperwork at 30 um, seems to fit what our individuals do. And the regulations that we are under requires that we do not keep anybody on a waiting list for targeted case management, which is the only model we have in place right now. Whatever the state is considering, we are under the targeted case management rules and regulations, which require us to not maintain or keep anybody on a waiting list over uh, three months, three month period. Teresa said she's got about 25 referrals right now. Uh, to go on, we have Sarah's caseload who has submitted her resignation. Those will be redistributed amongst the girls. We have the additional referrals coming on that we have to address. And then, then that person would not be given, the new person um, would not be given 30 caseloads, new caseloads that all have to be started at the same time because that paperwork would be totally overwhelming for um, We have never, we have never hired anybody without the need to do so. And that sometimes comes at budget times, but more often than not, not. Uh, we bring in case managers as we need them, and we don't take people below, you know, I don't remember a time when we've been below 25 cases. Um, so the girls are all at right now, 30 plus. I know a whole lot about caseloads. Mm -hmm. And when you set a caseload number, it's the maximum and the minimum. And thereafter, everybody wants less. No, our girls have not, our case managers have not been given the luxury. We, we keep them right at 30, 30 plus. Uh, because like I say, the amount of paperwork that goes with target case management and the Medicaid program is considerable. The CIS has done nothing to reduce that paperwork. They do come in and do the evaluation, but it's up to the case manager to write those goals and objectives and continue the meetings with the individuals on a regular basis. But it could all go to the integrated home health model. It could all go there, but under, until that decision is made, we're still under the requirements of the federal regulations to not have a waiting list for more than 30 days, for three months for an individual. So and you're saying you would set it at 30 and create a waiting list? Pardon me? So you're going to set a magic number and create a waiting list? Is that what you're? No, we're not. We want to delete the waiting list that we have now because we don't have the case managers to serve. We don't. We don't run to the board when we have. You know, when we think we might get. This is not justification for a position. Why is it not? There's nothing in there. It is your opinion that you need another case manager. There's no justification in there. Well, that, that opinion is based upon then the, history, the, opinion on the paper. history of the office. Patty, okay. then, how many uh, clients with the new case manager, one is hired, would that person be responsible for? How many <coughs> do you suppose they'll start, you would recommend that they start with? We'll bring them in and we'll, re we we'll redistribute the existing Okay, so okay. they don't have the expectation to have 30 new people. I understand that being an improvement. Okay, that new person is going to have what, 25 and 28? Oh, well, that's yeah. still quite a few. Yes, yes. and yeah. then everybody else will have 27 and 28, and then they will all take turns taking new people. And they will take staff. Okay, what's the pleasure of the board on this initiation of hiring? I'd move it. Uh, I don't have a problem with this. Uh, is there a second? I second it. Okay. I don't well, I don't have an issue with it either. I think that, you know, we, we, we can't have a waiting list. And if we, we've got to comply with federal <coughs> regulations. And um, um, I think that, you know, just based on the services provided and the, and the create the quality that we've enjoyed over the last number of years, uh, particularly in the mental health area, uh, it should be done. 
if there is a change on like moving people over, as I understand, to what integrated? Any change, yeah. Okay, then we would revisit the case manager position. That would, like, I'm just trying the, to. The, the second half of that is they may go to IHH mm -hmm. and the name of targeted case management may change, mm -hmm. but it's going to change to care manager or something. So that service is still going to be required whether they are under okay. IHH or targeted okay. case management. It is still going to be a requirement that the people are served to make sure that those assessments are carried out by the providers and other folks that are responsible for the care. Okay. Any further discussion? Those in, those in favor of the group saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Thanks, aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item uh, number C, which is the uh, county self-funding uh, health insurance plan. Uh, Ed, do you want to discuss that, please, with us? It's essentially what we've got is just a, an update to let you know that uh, the SPD is finally complete. Uh, there were some discrepancies that we had between the original SPD that was submitted to Wellmark and what, we, what our expectations for claims payment were. Mm -hmm versus what, uh, the, how the claims were actually paying. Uh, there were three fairly significant areas that we had to readdress, and it's taken us most of the year to get that spot to readdress. Uh, they are complete at this point. The claims have been reprocessed, so everything should be fixed and on its way, and uh, the SPD is fine. Okay, so good. We'll be distributing those, hopefully, at uh, the health fair <coughs> on November the 10th. Okay. And, uh, <coughs> Can you uh, tell people what SPD means? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Too much time to build. Summary plan description uh, that just describes uh, the complete uh, makings of your health plan. Okay. Uh, let you know what, what it pays for and what it doesn't pay for. All right, okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Ed. Right. Thanks. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Yeah. Item B is, Ed, uh, we've already taken care of that, haven't we? Pending litigation, yes. discussion, and action. You did that earlier on. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good. All right. Um, oh, okay, uh, we have uh, approval uh, of uh, and uh, presentation of a proclamation on uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Uh, Margaret, are you here? Do you have? Uh, I'm here. Good. Do you have anyone else you want to have step up here with you? I'm here by myself. Oh, you are. It's good to see you sure back in action. Sheriff sure can come up and stand with you. <laughs> It's good to see you back in action. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, Margaret, I'd like, to, I'd like to read this proclamation. Uh, whereas domestic violence is a serious crime that affects people of all ages, ra races, ages, income levels, lifestyles, and sex, and that the fact that the problem affects someone that you know. Whereas one of three women will uh, be a victim of violence in her lifetime. Domestic violence violates the individual human rights and destroys dignity, security, and self-worth due to the systematic use of physical, emotional, sexual, psychological, and economic control or abuse. And whereas the Siouxland, in Siouxland, the Council of Sexual Assault and Domestic Violence is available 24 hours a day and last it responds to, at last it responds to 1,780 unduplicated victims provided 11,475 nights of shelter to 380 women and 301 children fleeing domestic abuse and despite high census, no one in an unsafe situation was turned away. Whereas the impact of domestic violence affects all members of the community and only a co coordinated community response will put a stop to this atrocious crime and assures funding for continuously available to provide uh, self-life services. Now, therefore, I, George W. Boykin, Chairman on behalf of Woodbury County Board of Supervisors, do hereby proclaim the month of October 2014 as Domestic Violence Awareness Month in Woodbury County, Iowa, and urge all citizens to actively participate in the scheduled events and programs and to think about the fact that this may be someone that you know. Thank you. You Thank provide you. a valuable service to this community, Martha, and uh, you have for years. Uh, um, 
I know that we've used it uh, quite extensively over the years. I have my agency and, and other agencies have too. Uh, you're vital uh, of importance to this community. Uh, what you also do is provide with the number of people that you uh, 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 support here and provide services to, uh, you keep people out of our law enforcement system, you hold families together, uh, you keep uh, youngsters in the family that, that, that needs to be kept there, and uh, you're of vital importance to this, to, to this community, and we do appreciate this. Thank you. I just want to say that, you know, our agency doesn't uh, exist by ourselves. Uh, we need the community and our partners in the community to help us respond to domestic violence. Um, without the Sheriff's Department, law enforcement, the county attorney's office, others in the community, um, we couldn't do our work without their cooperation and assistance. We have very good response from the community. In October, Domestic Violence Awareness Month is a time to really create awareness in our community. And usually we have a vigil because uh, we want the community to know that frequently, about every six weeks in Iowa, a woman dies as a result of domestic violence. However, this year we're not going to have a vi vigil. We're going to have a documentary um, that is supported by the Wade Foundation next Monday evening um, at the Orpheum. There's going to be a documentary that talks about um, domestic violence, uh, women leaving, and um, you know, you often hear, well, why doesn't she just leave? It's very difficult to leave, and the documentary will really show um, some of those issues that women face around leaving. We want to change that question in terms of not blaming the victim, but looking at why does that abuser continue to abuse her and someone else if she does leave that situation. Our society needs to take a look at both the victim <coughs> as well as the abuser and um, put more energy into services related to that abuser. So I urge you to come to that documentary. We will have a, a panel presentation of our partners after the documentary, but it's very, very well done. And um, i like to see a whole many leaders in the community as well as community members um, there to um, see this thoughtful presentation. Lastly, we cannot provide the services we provide at our agency without the financial support of the community as well. And I'm pleased um, to announce that we're having an open house at um, the end of October. And I'm just going to pass this out. But we um, would really like the Board of Supervisors to come as well so that you can see the agency that provides the services um, that it does um, in our community. Many people have not been there often in the past. We have not um, wanted uh, the public in the facility. And because of that, there's been many uh, misunderstandings about what the facility is and what it looks like, the services we provide. So because of renovation of the kitchen, um, much because of the generosity of word to us um, is finished, we'd like you to come and see that facility. <laughs> Um, we have other work to do, but we're very happy with um, how that renovation turned out. Okay, wonderful, Mark. Sheriff, do you have any comments yeah, relative I'm to this? Gonna, I've been talking to Margaret, and I wanted to let you all know Margaret and I are, uh, I'm trying to work the deal out with the courts. I'm going to work with local legislators. I'm going to look for the board to help us. Um, but we have a, when we put people on a protection order, it's a piece of paper. And it, it, uh, it's just a piece of paper. Yeah, it tells all these things. But yes, I mean, it meaningless, but yet it has that. But it really doesn't have what I think is necessary. And we've come up with a scram bracelet electronic uh, tracking device. And I want the courts to put um, those people on electronic monitoring and give that victim the receiver to know if that subject's within a thousand feet. We have that technology today, and this piece of paper is nothing more than, it's not gonna keep going. With that 
uh, party having that receiver to know they're within a thousand feet, it will notify law enforcement. And we can respond on the spot and do an occasional check. So that's the partnership that we want to work together. And I'm asking local legislators to get involved in this to change that law so the courts will put these people on this. Because that piece of paper we go out and serve that protection order is merely a piece of paper. You ask many that are victims, and I'm going to see if I can get some to come and argue in front of the legislators to try to get some laws changed. I think that's major, Sheriff. I mean, that's because as you say, uh, the people that, the perpetrators, I mean, they really, uh, they don't have any respect for the person that they're abusing or a law uh, for, for that matter at all. Right. So if we can get something like that, I'm sure that the board would be willing to help you and to uh, uh, somehow uh, uh, provide supportive information to our state legislature to get that law changed so that that can happen. And we're gonna that would really up. add some teeth to this. Yeah, we're going to bring that up Monday at our meeting. Absolutely. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Hope to see you Monday and have your house. You betcha. Could I have a motion to, to uh, receive this resolution for signatures, please? Movement. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Running a little bit behind, uh, we should have, uh, we have a public hearing for a property sale uh, and it's 128970 located at 1408 West 4th Street. Is there anyone in the audience to speak for or against the sale of this property? We're just asking the public hearing now, ma'am. Then I'll offer it for sale right after we close the public hearing. Mr. Chairman, hearing no one, will the hearing be closed? Okay. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. Now I'm opening it up for uh, bids. Is, are, is there anyone in the audience to bid on this piece of property? Yes, ma'am, would you give your name, please? Barbara J. Okay. And what I is live next door to that property. Okay. I have been maintaining that property ever since they tore the house down. Mm -hmm. uh, I have had we go sprayed on it because of all the weeds that grow. We mow it every once a week or so. Um, we do the sidewalk every snowing. Okay. But we have been taking care of it as a family. We've been taking care of it ever since the house was torn down. I mean, that's been about three or four years. Okay. And your bid is what? Pardon me? Your bid is what? What is your bid? The amount of your bid? Oh, $188. Okay, all right. There was another one too. Does anyone else bid on it? I yes, sir. What? Danny Robinson. Danny Robinson. What's your bid? $500. Is there anyone else to bid on it? Anyone else to bid on it? Hearing none, I entertain a motion, ladies and gentlemen. Motion Does she understand what happened? I sure do. Okay. Motion to sell the property to Danny Robinson for five hundred. There's a second. Second. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Thank you. Item uh, item C is the resolution of property sale for uh, property zero seven. Four zero four zero. Um, we need a motion, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, move to place it on the agenda for the twenty eighth day of October at ten fifteen. Okay. Those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Um, item seven, uh, county engineer. I think we'll move right on to, we have the opening of bids, we're kind of uh, running behind time, so we'll go right on to that, uh, uh, Mark. Right, the other seven. Uh, these bids are for the uh, extension of 240th Street from Allison to Andrew Avenue, and then the improvement of Andrew on 235th Street. We have three bidders. Do you have a bid uh, sheet? Yes, we do. Yes. Our 
first bid is from Lieber Construction Incorporated of Watton Island. Uh, bid bond is provided. The I'll read the total bids. Okay. Uh, we'll be checking those then afterwards. Okay. Total bid seven hundred seventy-four thousand one hundred twenty-two dollars and fourteen cents. Seven seven four one two two fourteen. Our next bid is from C.J. Moynat and Sons. <coughs> Proposal guarantee was also included. Total bid, $862,000. Three hundred sixty-five dollars and seventy cents. Eight six two three six five seventy. Finally, we have a bid from L.A. Carlson of Merrill, Iowa. $7,657.50. Is this a finished product? The, uh, the, the project involves uh, grading the road, including improvement of ditches. Uh, we're putting uh, eight inches of macadam base, <coughs> which is a, a heavier coarse stone, as a base layer, five inches of gravel on top of that. Uh, this will provide us a good wearing surface that we'll treat with calcium chloride for the <coughs> winter season. Next spring, we'll be looking at doing something more permanent for uh, surfacing autographs coming into the seal coat. Okay, but this, when they're done, when they're road done, is open. This is, road will be open. This will be a haul road that will serve CF through the winter. Mr. Chairman, I move these bids be referred to uh, county engineer. Second. And you'd like to come back with yes. a decision on it within the next uh, um, We will take hour. the bids out immediately, and uh, Ben has the computer. We'll, we'll plug in their bids, make sure everything is correct on the bids, and we'd like to make a recommendation of work today. That would be good. We put this on a very tight timetable so that uh, we have a late start date on this project of October 27th. So it's going to get pretty fast. Everything moving right along. Okay, very good. The bids were excellent. Yes, uh, the bids were very good. We got better prices today than we got before the CF drive. So now, when you when when you it, it started, you were going the twenty seventh. When will it be completed? Um, what's the timeline on that? Do you know? Well, end of depending November, on the weather, roughly, <coughs> roughly end of November. Okay, all right, sounds pretty good. Um, there is not a huge amount of, of earth to move on this. No. Uh, everything's on site, so they're not hauling it in from uh, their locations. Right. Uh, everything we have and need is is right there on site. We're not too far from LG Everest, and so um, this should go fairly quickly. Okay. Those in favor of the motion indicate the saying aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed, same sign. Okay, let's go back to item A. Item A, we took uh, quotations on hydraulic excavator. Uh, I think that was about four weeks ago. Uh, we've analyzed the bids. We had the opportunity finally to take a look at the uh, a demonstration unit uh, provided uh, by uh, another county up in Wisconsin last week. Um, I recommend award of the bid to uh, Sheehan Mac Volvo of Sioux Falls. Uh, the low bid machine was two hundred thirty-three thousand. I can find my quote sheet right now. About one hundred dollars, I believe it was. There is also a couple of uh, other. Uh, Items we have not made a decision on some of the accessories to purchase yet. We are looking at buying a ditch cleaning bucket. Um, price on the ditch cleaning bucket from Sheehan was thirty-eight hundred thirty-five dollars. Uh, the hydraulic tree shear is a needed piece of equipment, but now that we've made the selection on the excavator, we'll we will take our current tree shear to them to see if it can be modified to operate on the current machine. Okay. 
Okay, is there, is there or two hundred thirty-three thousand four hundred seventy dollars is the final bid with trade. Move it. Like discussion. Those in favor indicate for saying aye. Aye. Those opposed. Okay. Uh, next, we have a uh, request for board approval of an easement across our property at 759 Frontage Road in Mobile. Uh, Mid-American has been uh, contacted by the fair board to provide additional electric service for the uh, new campground that's been constructed that lays just on the north corner of our property. Best way for them to bring power in is across the east end of the secondary road property. Uh, we've looked at this with the Mid-American staff and I recommend approval of the easement. Move it. Second. Discussion. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same say. Item C. Item C is consider award of the uh, hot mix asphalt route and seal. Um, we recommend award to the low bidder, uh, Sue Commercial Sleeping of West Des Moines for $17,105. Move it. Okay. Second. Discussion. Those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed. Uh, we also took bids with uh, for uh, recycling of our concrete stockpiles at uh, uh, Mobile and Odo. Um, we had two bids that were very close uh, that were both uh, uh, very similar on a per ton basis for the uh, recycle. Uh, the bid from CAP did have an error. Um, their uh, unit price times the bid quantity governs. They had put in a uh, bid for twice mobilization. Their mobilization was bid at $1,800. They put it in for $3,600, resulting in an $1,800 error on their bid. Um, with that correction, I recommend award to CAP Recycling of Sioux City for $111,000. $800. Move it. Second. Discussion. Those in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Schneider. <laughs> it's a good report. You always put together an excellent report. Our uh, highlights of the year, of course, were uh, construction of the two boat ramps on the Little Sioux River. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, following uh, heavy rains in June, we had some <laughs> other issues that we had to deal with with damages from that. And did some repairs to uh, the one ramps, uh, <clears throat> have a little bit better shape, and as well as, as that regrading, regrading of the Southwood Conservation Entrance Road. We had some erosion problems from the rains there when that project was done last fall. So that's all been repaired and fixed. And uh, campers down there really like that yeah. better grade coming out of there than that steep S curve. Bet. <laughs> so, uh, not a lot of huge projects. Uh, you know, this past summer as we went through some other projects that will be on next year's report since the fiscal year kind of cuts right in the middle of our uh, busy season. And uh, most of last year was spent, uh, as well as through the summer, getting ready for hosting our state conference, which we did uh, last month. Have any questions on the report? Or? Again, very good. I mean, you always have an excellent uh, report to us, and uh, your state conference, I think, you know, went out very, very, very successful. I, I was there and met, uh, you know, some very nice folks. I think that they enjoyed themselves while they were here in uh, Sioux City. Uh, folks from out, outside the county and I think they appreciate you know our, our, our parks and, and what we've done in this area so it's very nice very well done it's always a good conference it rotates around the state so you get to see different areas and uh, it's been 13 years since we were up here last time was uh, a few days after 9-11 occurred and it was a real tough time plus we ran three straight days so we had beautiful weather this year yes we did it's exact opposite of the great right. time That's right. and people for about half the county the yeah, they did a lot of enjoyable things. You took them on a nice tour. Is there a motion to receive this report? Move it. Second. Discussion. Those in favor indicate for saying aye. Aye. Both the same sign. The report will be on our uh, 
website as well for the public to access. Excellent. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Ray. Item uh, nine, uh, emergency services, David Brown. Good morning. Good morning. for medium duty truck and uh, four bins. My recommendation is that we open them today, refer them back to me for a week, and then make the word next week. Okay. Can you have your shot out in your way? First one is very uh, Say that again. Forty-eight thousand. Oh, okay. Second time you said eighty-four. Eight hundred and ninety-four dollars. Okay. Sorry. This is for a medium-duty truck. How big is that truck? It's a medium -duty. equivalent of a heavy-duty. Three fifty, something like that. Yeah, three fifty, four fifty, depending on which vendor you talk to. Whether Saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, same sign. That all you need, Gary? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Item 10, we have Mark Neary back again on consideration of uh, project awards. We're not quite there yet. We're not quite right. there yet. Okay, we'll just, we'll just hold off. We'll correct. Yes, please. Um, sure. Um, our CF drive project is now complete with the exception of seating. This is the permanent road coming off of 255th Street that will serve the completed plan. Uh, the road is uh, built, all structures are in place, water lines in place, and it's been graveled. Uh, it needs to be linked up to the internal roads within the plan, but the county portion of that road is finished and ready to go when, when it's ready on the other side. Um, our uh, bridge construction on Michigan Avenue, the bridge itself is complete. The grading contractor will be moving in and uh, getting the road built up to the elevation of that new bridge. Um, work starting next week on 185th Street. Uh, this is one of the uh, first two bridges that we let back in June. Uh, that involves the uh, uh, $1.3 million special project levy that we started, to, we're in our second year of that now. Um, the other project, Pocahontas Avenue, is well underway with grading. As you uh, probably heard last week, we had an unfortunate fatality on site there. It involved an employee of one of the subcontractors of uh, Dixon Construction. Um, the uh, uh, work on Bronson continues. Uh, by the end of this week, all of the substructure work should be done. Should be decking uh, 
calls for for the uh, um, support of the concrete slab bridge uh, during next week if, if all goes well. So, uh, we've been slow a little bit, bit by rain on a lot of these construction projects. See you guys back. Good. Uh, everything we're good. If you need more time on that, we, we're going to be around for quite a while. Um, actually, we don't. Uh, we should have uh, a clean uh, award or ability to make a clean award here. Okay. Got one for Pat as well. We had a uh, $22,000 gap, which is quite an error to make that not work. Um, I recommend award of the project to Lieber Construction for $774,122.14. Okay, move it. All right, discussion. Those in favor, indicate you're saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Thank you. We will prepare contract documents and get that rolling. Well. Very good. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, yes, sir. We should Dennis? talk about funding that. Yes. And the funding I'd recommend that we do with central purpose bonds under the Code of Iowa, we do have that ability to do it. The reason why we use central purpose bonds is we need to kind of save back our low cost sales tax at our best in Woodbury County starting to take off. We have a couple big projects potentially coming up. So we prefer to use central purpose <coughs> bonds. Okay. If you agree with that, we can go ahead and start the procedure and get this done immediately. Okay. Is there a motion to allow him to go ahead and do this? That's the purpose bond. We're okay doing that, Josh. It's not on the agenda today. Well, to push back. I mean, what kind of background work do you need to do? I mean, the background work is just getting all of our bonding hearings at a hearing date. We go ahead and have the hearings, have a resolution set for the hearing date, and then we have about okay. three or four weeks. You can proceed with that with the consensus of the board, and then okay. come back next week That's to awesome. set the date. All right. Do we have a consensus, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Okay, okay very you. good, thank you. Okay, hearing of any individual which to make a presentation on an item not on the agenda. Chair. Um, you'll get a bill next week, I'll get the sticker shock. It's, uh, we implemented a, well, the doctor implemented a, a ruling that somebody comes in the jail that's 0.25 or higher they need to go to the hospital and uh, either sign off on a medical or um, <clears throat> go through the procedures and then they can be uh, booked into our jail. Well, uh, when we did that, the, the police department is the ones who brought in the majority of those people and uh, they were getting the bill. And so they brought it to our attention that they probably got about an $18,000 bill. Well, the Iowa Supreme Court ruled in 1984 that it's the sheriff's responsibility, regardless if they're booked in. Once they get into custody, it becomes the sheriff's uh, fees to pay that, which is uh, hopefully something that uh, changes in legislation <laughs> this year uh, because uh, it becomes a very expensive uh, for the county. So there will probably be about a $20,000 bill. But I emailed Josh and PJ to review that to see if they see anything different. But checking with other sheriffs uh, throughout Iowa, that has been, it's been a always been the deal since then. That, right? the ruling, and the ruling came out of Woodbury County. It was uh, uh, Miller versus Sioux City Police. So it was when Sheriff Miller was in. So it's there and it's ours. So <laughs> not much we can do about it. Unless Josh finds some way to argue it for us. That's it. So don't get scared, shot. Uh, well, we got you here. We got a, a deal for Stalling. Right. Changing the numbers. Right. I'm having a lot of difficulty oh. figuring those out. Okay. If, this is really simple for me. If it can stay this way, I, I'd appreciate it. If well, I haven't talked to any of the other people. Okay. The, the, and what we could do is we can still give you that weekly if that makes it easier for you. This but I, I want you to get the monthly one because it's a clear picture of what happens in our jail. If you look at the one we give you monthly, um, you're going to see the numbers at times are 278. That is a real picture of what our correctional officers are doing each and every day. Where you get that one, you're just getting a snapshot at the end of the day. 
And the clearer picture is uh, at times, I'll say uh, today is the 14th, maybe we handle 230 inmates. Uh, on the 15th, maybe we handle 264. That's a really a clear picture of what is happening. And the form that we sent you that we were going to change so uh, you got a clearer picture um, was one that we sent to the Department of Corrections. That's what they get. But what we can do, since you're kind of used to that, is we can give you that. Don't get fixated on that because it's really not a clear picture. The monthly uh, tally is really going to show you what our correctional staff deals with daily. It's a really a, a better, and then maybe I can explain it to you better. It, it, so, it was just more information than we actually need. Uh, you know, a bit on um, men, women, uh, it kind of gives you a really good idea of what what's happening. So better, better really picture of what's happening in the jail. All that is is telling you at 6 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. how Ooh, many yeah. inmates are in there. At 6.05, that number isn't even accurate anymore. I mean, it changes that fast. So I, I, when I was looking at it, the Department of Corrections report is the accurate report that we do every month. And on that, all, all we're sending you is 6 o'clock in the morning when we do a tally. How many inmates are there? Actually, it's 5.40 in the morning because they do it 20 minutes before they come off ship. And by the time 6 o'clock hits, that number is changed. Because you're processing more people than what shows up on, on this one sheet. Right. Uh, All that, that is is 6 o'clock when we do our head count at 6 o'clock, that's the number that they've been sending you. But we could have three people waiting to be booked in, and they're not going to be on that count because that count's already been done. Because so you you're have just getting a snapshot of that time. Will they be that, on the next day? Never served. I mean, they don't serve no, on that. I mean, they're in and out. They can, right. be, they can uh -huh. be booked, processed, go to court. They can and be they released, mm -hmm. and it, they will okay. never show up as part of, as a number at, that our, our correctional officers handle because okay. you don't get the next one and they'll. The Maybe that number could be added to this sheet here so it's more simply understood. Um, for for, for us. Well, I can make it simple. <laughs> I just gave you, all I did was take yeah. the report that uh -huh. we sent to DOC mm -hmm. and let you look at that. But if you want a we simpler could, number, yeah. I can do that. I mean, I went through that. Right I mean, I'm saying to myself, that's a lot more information than I need. Yeah. And what we could do, uh, Larry, is uh, <coughs> say Monday, we could give you the numbers that we had all day instead of saying that. Uh, that's 212 that day. It, that day we may have had in and out 240. Okay. That way you actually have a better number of what we're dealing with. Yeah. I think that's so. Yeah, I think maybe <laughs> okay. I like to defer that to him. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Uh, thanks. thanks. Thanks, sure. Anyone else? Yeah. Okay, I'd entertain a motion to recess. Motion. Okay, motion. <coughs> and we will recess to the Nature Center at 1 o'clock.
you know, we've got a lot of kids coming out of school and stuff that will have opportunities and we're not offering that. There's just a lot of opportunities with that amount of money. We should start safeguarding our taxpayers a little better. I think we all got excited and went after this thing. And I said, you know, after we, after we did it, we still were throwing a few more extra dollars. I mean, it's already going. Right. Wow. And that could happen. Especially with as tight as everything is and tell the coffers when we're full. You know, I think if we already own it, why do we have to keep giving it? Well, I see that that's all we need to give better than we have to give it. It's hard to count. That's the hard part of the money. I'm not going to hire us. Well, we you know, don't know what. I'll just say, for example, we do uh, 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 a bet center up in Omaha, in Omaha, up in Sioux Falls. They did put some criteria on that, you know, uh, for some of the money. 